What's going on smart people? Next week I have what is called the physics exit exam. It's a test that every physics major at ODU has to take in order to graduate. And it's a standardized test. It's provided by ETS, which is the same thing that distributes the physics GRE and the regular GRE. I don't think that all schools or all universities do the physics exit exam. I think it's just one of the criteria that helps for accreditation and things like that. Uh, but that's something that I have to do. It's on the 20th, so it's exactly six days from now. So I figured for this video what we could do is walk through the sections of the exam together and then I'll probably start studying for it tonight. I would have loved to have started studying earlier but with finishing my senior thesis and things like that this is just finally the time that I get to start preparing for it. So let's take a look. Okay well to get to the place where I am right now all I did was I googled physics exit exam and then there was the the first link was ETS. I clicked on that and it brought me to this page right here uh, which gives you the option of looking at the description of the test as well as some sample questions. So ETS, like I said, is the main distributor of GRE. So a lot of the tests are, or a lot of the questions are going to be formatted similar to how the questions were asked if you took the physics GRE. Uh, if we go to the test description, it's a 70, it's a 70 question test broken into a bunch of different topics. So as you could probably expect, if you're taking uh, an exit exam in physics at the end of your degree, there's going to be classical mechanics, there's going to be quantum, E&M, and some special relativity, as well as some special topics sprinkled in there. Uh, and that's exactly what it says in the test outline. It's weird that they group classical mechanics and relativity together. Normally you would see that grouped with E&M, uh, but whatever. So go over Newton's laws, probably Lagrangians and Hamiltonian mechanics. E&M got a refresh on circuits as well as Maxwell's equations. Then we've got a section on thermo and stat mech. That's probably the section that I'm going to need to refresh on the most just because it's been a year since I took my thermo class and that is that's a big class. You go over a lot in one semester. So I'm going to need to spend some time on that. Quantum and atomic physics. Now this is probably the section that I feel the most comfortable with just because I'm in my second course in quantum right now and uh, I've taken a course in, in atomic physics, so that's good. Now this is a little weird because they have 17% special topics, 6% miscellaneous topics. I don't know how they really differentiate be the, between the two, but I'm assuming both of those are going to be like a, some nuclear physics, some particle physics, maybe, or like it says condensed matter, maybe solid state. This is going to be a lot of the stuff that's kind of hard to study for. It's going to probably be a lot of you know it or you don't. And then next what they do is they break down all of the sections into what type of questions they are. So 25% verbal, qualitative questions in which the stem and options consist primarily of words, so word problems. Uh, pictorial slash spatial. So they'll give you diagrams and ask, and ask you to solve problems by referencing diagrams. Graphical, you get the idea. Symbolic, numerical. Then it breaks down the relative percent of physics questions at various cognitive levels. And what that's just doing is it's saying some stuff you're just going to have to remember what the equation is or sort of remember what the answer is. Then there's going to be ones where the core way to answer the problem is to remember one concept and use that to get you through the problem. And then a little bit less, 31% multiple concept problems. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Now... The way that my university formats this is that you have to score above the bottom 20 percentile. I don't know if this is something that's across all universities that have to do this test, but that's that's where this uh, fits in. So essentially what that means is you have to do better than 20% of the people that take it, which doesn't sound too bad, uh, especially if you're someone who's preparing yourself for grad school or something that means I, I don't know I feel like certain people might take studying for this kind of thing less seriously if this is the end of the road for you anyways if that makes sense so it shouldn't be too bad to score within that percentile personally I don't think that this whole outline thing is too useful I, I think you could pretty much guess what's going to be on the exam as far as uh, subjects go but what is useful is this section here that gives you sample questions. By the way, sorry if I sound really sick. 
there's so much pollen outside right now and it's killing me I'm dying uh, but here we have a bunch of sample questions this is what I'm gonna spend today and tomorrow going over mostly uh, this is this is gonna be the most helpful thing because it's got some circuit analysis it's got what else have we got cool how many questions are there on this so this has 35 sample questions that's pretty good uh, I don't think that there's much more to talk about other than this you know not every university does this so I would check with maybe your academic advisor or a faculty member to see if this is something that you're gonna have to do probably your senior year hope you guys found this video useful or a little bit helpful let me know in the comment section if you did and I'll see you guys there